Hello, 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 group. It is so good to see you all today. Today is Tuesday, so I'm doing questions and answers. Um, the way this works on Mondays here in the Facebook group, I put up a post that says, what can I help you with? And then I give you about 24 hours to drop all your questions on that thread. And then on Tuesdays, at some point on Tuesdays, I go live here in the group and answer them for you. Yay! And if you're watching the replay, you can go to whitneynasley.com slash group. Or if you're on Facebook, you can type in Whitney Nasley. You can type in become a real estate investor. You can probably type in she buys it. <laughs> Yay! And it'll route you over to our group. Yay! So that's how it works if you want your question answered by me. If you have another question, you just want it answered, you want to start a general conversation in the group, do it to it, baby. All right. Uh, our first question is from Shelly. She says, would you or have you ever allowed family members or friends to become tenant buyers? Shelly, this is a great question. So would you allow friends or family to become tenant buyers? Yes, I would allow them. Have I ever allowed friends or family to be a tenant buyer? None of them have qualified. Or they didn't like the houses that I had available. So here's my thing. I don't care who you are, what you do. I don't care what your credit score looks like. I don't care what your uh, ex-partner did. I don't hardly even care how you make your money, which uh, I proved that when the FBI raided my house because I had a house that was in a big drug situation. Um, as long as you qualify, you can pay me and you can pay me every month and you stay out of trouble with the FBI, I don't care. Okay? I don't care if I know you or if I don't know you. If you got those little green guys, little dollar bills, dollar dollar bills, y'all, if you promise to work on your credit, if you promise to keep your job or get a job, if you promise that you're going to go talk to Chris Burleson and get your mortgage through him after you complete your lease option with me, I don't care who you are. I don't. I'm looking for people that need a second chance at life. I'm looking for people that need somebody that's willing to work with them. I'm looking for people when I'm looking for tenant buyers and I have six empty houses right now. So I'm looking for six people right now all of the stress um all of the phone calls too uh so i don't care they don't have to be my friends and family and a lot of times people think because they are my friends and family i'll give them a discount y'all i'm after those little green guys I like to see them march into my bank account on the first of every month. I like to see them in large non-refundable option fees. And I learned a long time ago, I learned this lesson, but God keeps giving me this lesson back because apparently I haven't learned it enough yet. I learned a long time ago to look at the numbers and not lead with my heart and Jason's over here laughing at me but I keep getting the same lesson because I haven't learned it enough yet but I will tell you this if you have friends or family that are interested in one of your houses and they have the money the little green guys to pay for it and they're qualified and you are willing to deal with them and you're willing to deal with them if this deal goes bad, then do it to it. I don't care. If you've got a social security number, if you've had a job for the last two years, if you've got the non-refundable option fee, whether I know you or not, I don't care. I would deal with acquaintances, but I would not deal with friends and family personal needs. They can't hear you all the way over there. You wanna come over here? Yeah, Come here. I have a mouse in my pocket today. <laughs> this is my husband, Jason. 
He really exists. My handsome husband, Jason. He really does exist. Uh, Y'all don't see him on a lot of videos, but he's here with me. Yay! So you want to go ahead and answer this question too, babe? I would do business with acquaintances. If somebody's good enough for me to be called a friend, or especially my family, I would not do business with them because, and that's not just with houses. I'm just that way in general, because if the deal goes bad, when it comes to business, I'm about business and I'm going to treat you like a business associate not a cousin, not a brother, not a father, not a mother, not a whoever, right? I, I don't differentiate on the lines of that. So me personally, I shy away from business with, uh, you know, close friends and family. So just me, my two cents. Uh, that being said, my brother so is... Except you. You and I do I buy apartments together, but that's it. That's all. Period. Thanks for dealing with me, Dave. It's somebody's got to do it. Our job, though. Um, so Jason and I own apartments together, but my brother and I own houses together. So I'm the complete opposite. I will work with my family. I've got a brother that I work very closely with that I'm very tight with. And my mom and I, y'all know my mom and I are super duper tight. So I would do a deal with her, too. Um, I tried flipping a house with my dad. Actually, I tried. We didn't even flip it. We were talking about flipping it. We tried to buy it. And y'all, this is the first house that I walked into. And from the outside, this house looked complete. But when we walked in, there was floor, floor joist ceiling trusses. But there was nothing else in it. I mean, you can see the dirt. There wasn't a subfloor. There wasn't plywood. There wasn't like two by tens or two by eights. So you could walk from the front of the house to the back of the house. From the outside of the house, the house looked like a house. Inside the house, the house is not a house, <laughs> and it was going to be like a total redo. And it was over there next to the credit union, next to the mall, New South Credit Union. So we saw it all the time. So Daddy and I went over there to look at it, and that was the last house that Dad and I ever tried to buy together or flip together. Now, Mom and I, we could flip some houses. We flipped an, a house in 2015 together, and that was fine. Um, my brother and I flip houses and usually it's because I flip it. He goes by and says, this is wrong. This is still wrong. This is still wrong. Get somebody back out here to fix this. And I go, okay. Um, so I would flip houses and buy houses and do deals with family. And y'all know I don't really have many friends. So family, yes. But as far as tenant buyers, I don't care. If you got little green guys, if you got money, if you got dollar dollar bills, y'all, fine. Cool. See, I told you it would ring while we were here. And that's my handy guy wondering what we're going to do on one of our new houses that we're getting tomorrow. Woohoo! All right. Denise has our second question and she says, I'm renting land now. <laughs> Thanks in part to the Whitney Nasley YouTube University. We will take this moment to have a station break and make sure that everybody is subscribed to our YouTube channel. I'm going to drop the link in right now, but if you're watching this video, you need to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're watching this on a replay on YouTube, please, 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 please subscribe. As I'm recording this, we are about 15,000, 15,000, we are 15,000 subscribers away from where I want to be, but we are really 15 people away from hitting a huge milestone and a huge goal on YouTube. So subscribe. Yay. And thank you, Denise, for being subscribed to the YouTube channel. Okay, moving on. So Denise is renting land and her tenant has asked for owner financing. She wants to do a lease option. But how does she explain the need for a non-refundable deposit? Okay, so I have a couple questions in response to this. Are you already renting this land to this person who now wants to become your tenant buyer? Because if that's the case, technically, you could say that either everything that they've paid could be applied to the purchase price. I don't recommend that. You could say that next month's rent could be considered the down payment and that might be okay. But 
what you probably want to do is wait until their lease is up because you're already under contract with them for some terms and agreements. So what I think would be the cleanest, easiest, and best would be to complete the contract that you're under with these people and then work on a brand new deal and a brand new contract with them when it's time for their lease to come up. That's what I would do. Also, if they've asked for owner financing, but you want to give them the lease option, that's awesome. Totally cool. I'm game. But the reason you need to explain a non-refundable deposit is because in real estate, you are required to have some money invested in the property that you are trying to buy or that you have the option to buy. Now, the law just says that you have to have some consideration involved. And some consideration could be $10, it could be $100. Uh, Leslie has been buying houses with me for like a year and a half now, and she puts a dollar down as the earnest money or the non refundable option fee or the whatever when she buys her houses. And that's what I teach in First Sale Done Fast. But Denise, you're talking about you're wanting to sell this property as a lease option. So on my houses that I sell with non-refundable option fees, when I'm giving lease options to the tenant buyers, I'm looking for $5,000, $10,000, $15,000 or more because I want these people committed to actually buying the property from me. And the more people pay, the more people pay attention. So my strategy is different. When I'm buying, I'm trying to put just a little bit of money down. But when I'm offering it out for somebody to buy from me, I want a lot of bit of money, right? But ultimately, it's up to how valuable the property is. If I've got, I've got an outhouse house, which when I bought it actually had an outhouse. Mm -hmm. It had indoor plumbing as well, but it also had an outhouse. So for that house, $5,000 is like maxed out as much as I can get. Okay. But I've had some houses across the street from a lake. Well, in those houses, I'm one twenty twenty five thousand dollars $25,000 for somebody to move in. I had another house that was like down the street and around the corner from a lake. And a woman gave me $40,000 to move into that one. And then she left in six months. Okay. So, it all depends. I've got a house right now that is completely gutted. It was messed up in that drug deal situation too. Um, they were flipping it. It's completely gutted. And honest to goodness, it's going to take $15,000, maybe $20,000 for somebody to even be able to live in it. So I'm taking a little bit of money, like 500 bucks for somebody to move into that because I know it's going to take a lot of money. They're going to have to spend a lot of money to get this place even livable. So I don't want them to give me $15,000 when the house needs $15,000. So it all just depends on the property. It depends on what kind of work needs to be done. It depends on who you're talking to and what their situation is. Uh, I spoke with a woman this morning and she was like, okay, great. So if we give you $15,000 on this house that needs all the work, she was like, when can we move in? And I was like, I don't want you to give me $15,000. I want you to spend that $15,000 fixing this house yourself. And she was like, Oh, well, I don't know how to do that. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not doing, I'm not flipping this house for you. This is not a house worth me flipping. And you got to know that and you got to know your numbers and you got to know, you know, your risk tolerance and how much you're willing to put up with and what you would like in a return and all that stuff. And this house just doesn't meet the qualifications for me to flip it. So, there you go on that. Does that make sense? Any questions? Everybody cool over here? Hello, 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 hello. Hey, everybody. Okay, so um, Charine, Shireen, this Miss Summers <laughs> says, I have two houses under contract for lease option. I can't find any buyers. Any suggestions? Yes, I have questions for you as well. How much are you asking for the house? Are you asking more than it's worth? Are you asking more than it'll appraise for? 
How are you advertising it? Do you have bandit signs out? Is it on Zillow? Do you have it listed with an agent? Because most agents don't understand lease options and it confuses them and they just, yeah. Um, are you advertising a non-refundable option fee that's too high? Because remember, we are investors and we're taking offers on non-refundable option fees. I'm not a mortgage broker. I don't collect a down payment. I don't even, I'm not like, I'm a real estate agent. I'm the broker for Whitney Buys Houses, but I don't also, I don't collect earnest money either. I work with non-refundable option fees and I'm just taking offers. How much do you want to give me on this property? Well, so but somebody told me they'd give me this much. You want to give me more? Somebody told me they'd give me this much per month, but they'd only give me this much to move in. Can you meet that or beat that? Somebody told me that it would only take them two months to get their mortgage and they'd be able to give me money to move in and they'd pay me per month. Can you beat that? Oh, it's going to take you 24 months to get a mortgage. Oh, it's going to take you three months to sell your house before you have any money to give me to move in. Like I have tons of questions for you <laughs> on what kind of feedback you're getting from the market. So if you want to, we do this Q and A every single week. So if you want to give me more information, so that I can tell you how to fluff up some more buyers quicker because I know you're looking for somebody to take over that payment from you. You're looking for a non-refundable option fee or an assignment fee, and you're looking to get your sellers off your back, right? I got you, girl. I just need to know more about what you're doing. And I also want everybody to know that modules six, seven, and eight in First Deal Done Fast are all about finding qualified buyers, finding qualified tenant buyers, finding qualified people to move into these houses. And you can find out more about First Deal Done Fast at getyourfirstdeal.com. Okay. Uh, there's nine modules and a bonus. So there's like 10 modules in First Sold and Fast. And we got a little something, something that we're going to be trying out with First Sold and Fast to make it. I'll, I'll tell you about that later. But be on the lookout for something cool coming in First Sold and Fast. Okay, Jessica, who is in First Sold and Fast. Yay! Jessica says, what are the most important factors to evaluate once you buy vacant land? Okay, Jessica. I want you to look at these factors before you buy it. So while you're negotiating, while you're looking at the deal, while you're talking with the seller, before you close on it, I want you to look at what is the land zoned? Is it agricultural, residential, commercial, or industrial? Also, what is the land next to it zoned? What is the best use for this land? Because when we're looking at land, we basically got a clean slate. Is this a nice big pasture and a farmer would want to put his cattle on this land? Is this a peanut farm? Are peanuts are grown on farms, aren't they, babe? Of course. Would somebody want to plant some peanuts over here? Or would the big company in town want to buy this and you just assign it to them and wholesale it? Um, Up here you wouldn't want to plant peanuts because of the soil. In Tennessee, Jason says you wouldn't want to plant peanuts, but Jessica's not in Tennessee. So what I want you to look at is before you buy vacant land, what's it doing right now? What's it zoned and what's its highest and best use? If you're looking at a piece of land that is residential, this is a true story. If you're looking at an acre of land on the four lane highway that has a house on it and a little shed garage and is zoned residential. This is not just vacant land, but this would work for vacant land too. An acre of residential land is zoned residential, but there's a 10 acre track to the left of this house piece of land and a 10 acre track to the right of this house. So there's 20 acres that completely surround this piece of land and they are zoned commercial or industrial. 
then I would say that this one acre piece of land, it's highest and best use is going to be for you to buy it, get it rezoned up to commercial or industrial, whatever, and then sell it to whoever owns either 10 acres. Now, in this particular story, which is a true real life story, the same person owns the 10 acres on the left and the 10 acres on the right. So it should be pretty easy if you get in that one acre for you to call this woman and say, hey, I want to sell this one acre. How much will you give me? It needs to be rezoned and let her do it. OK, so that's what I want you looking at when you're evaluating land. And on the flip side, when when we bought the eight, the 10 acres on the left, they were zoned agricultural. When we bought the 10 acres on the right, they were already zoned commercial. So we got owner finance and we bought the right 10 acres. We bought these like back in the 90s. I mean, we've had this 10 acres for forever. But we were wanting to buy these 10 acres and it was zoned agricultural still because it was just growing grass. It wasn't doing nothing. But we got a mulch yard on this one. Well, we talked to our tenants over here and they wanted to extend their mulch yard over to this property. So we talked to the seller and set up owner financing. So we started um, making the seller payments and we started going through the process of letting our tenants rent this land from us and we put it on our tenants to get it rezoned. Okay, and this is just raw vacant land. And every single day I wake up and hope that the person that owns that house on that one acre sitting smack dab in the middle of our lot where we should have a retaining pond. That's what I'm going to do with the house <laughs> when we get it is we're just going to tear it down and put a retaining pond there because these 20 acres need one retaining pond and then I get three acres back on each piece. Anyway, find out what the property is zoned. Find out what it's doing right now and find out its best and highest use. And then honestly, you can either sell it to the people that have you surrounded or you could rezone it yourself and set up shop right there smack dab in the middle of it. Technically, I could buy that acre, turn it into commercial. I could put Whitney buys houses right there and I would be in the middle of mom's 20 acre track. Um, also though, I have a piece of vacant land that my brother and I bought in 2012, I think. Um, and it's just a, hake, a half acre. We bought it at auction. It was an online auction and we paid $1,500 for it. Tax tag and title, totally.